I'm a former US visa officer, and today I'm here to talk to you about errors on the DS-160. The first thing you need to know is that the DS-160 is an important document in your application. It needs to be accurate and it needs to be truthful in order to present it at your visa interview. So if you notice that there are errors on it or it was submitted before you could thoroughly review it, then this video is for you. First of all, it's understandable if you need to get some help filling out the DS-160. It's a convoluted document. Sometimes the system is slow or it shuts you out. And so getting some assistance to fill it out, it's fine. However, you want to realize and take account of the fact that you need to be the expert on your DS-160. So even if you have someone helping you with it, you still need to review it thoroughly. You need to ensure that the information put there is accurate. And you cannot just put the responsibility of this application on someone else. The visa officer is not going to be impressed if you come to the visa interview and say, uh, they ask you a question about something on the DS-160 and you say, oh, I didn't know that was in there or I didn't know that it was written that way. I didn't fill it out. My attorney did or my agent did. This is gonna be a really fast way to get the officer not to take your application very seriously. So if you do have an error and you realize after it's been submitted that you need to update it, I wanna to talk to you about a few suggestions here. First is you wanna consider if the change that needs to be made is actually material to your case. There are some non-material errors that of course it would be better if everything were 100% perfect, but they're not likely to impact the outcome of your case. For example, if the zip code of your house address is one non number off or the city of birth where you were born has a typo in it. Those kind of things are not going to materially usually impact the outcome of your case. And if you have one or two errors like that in your DS-160, you might not need to update it. Now, if your entire DS-160 has typos and errors all over it, that's when you might want to consider updating it just for that. But if it's just one or two small things, it's possible you could just let it be. Now, let's talk about material errors. These are things that could impact the outcome of your case that are information that needs to be shared with the visa officer. And then if it's not accurate, could negatively impact the impression the visa officer has and the decision they ultimately make about your case. Some of this stuff includes your current job, your education. If you submitted a DS-160, you know, a year ago, and now your appointment is finally coming up and you've gotten a new job or you've finished a new degree, you should probably fill out a new DS-160. So they are looking at an accurate reflection of your most recent situation, not something that reflects your life a year ago. Other things that are really important to get right there include the spelling of your name, your date of birth, and your passport number. If any of those are wrong, you should probably update your DS-160. Also, there are a lot of security questions on the DS-160, like have you ever been to jail? Have you ever been arrested? Have you ever violated U.S immigration law and you know at least 50 more questions about security matters and if you have not answered those accurately you may have a difficult time getting your visa approved so you want to be very truthful there and make sure that all of the answers to the security questions are truthful and reflective of your situation so if you've decided that there is something on your ds-160 that requires correction that you really need to submit a new one in order to put your best foot forward for this visa application, here is what you need to do. First, you need to fill out a new DS-160. You do this by going to the same SEAC website and I'm gonna leave some instructions in the comments below about how to recreate your old DS-160 so that you don't have to type everything in again. This will help save some time as obviously filling out the DS-160 takes a while and it's a little bit burdensome. Once you have verified that all the information is correct, that it looks good, and you submit it, you're going to get a new confirmation page and you're going to have a new confirmation number. That confirmation number you're going to want to communicate to the help desk at the consulate where you're applying. Now, this is kind of the confusing part. Once you've got the new DS-160, every consulate works a little bit differently. And so there are some consulates, few of them, but some where they allow you to change the DS-160 directly in the system. Other consulates will not allow 
allow you to change the DS160 in the system, and this is the majority of them. So what you're gonna have to do is first write to the help desk and ask them to update the DS160 number. They will sometimes do this, but it's not always a guarantee. So what you also wanna do is bring a copy of your old DS160 confirmation page and your new DS160 confirmation page. Bring both of those to your interview on the day of your interview. When, as soon as you walk into the door and you see support staff guiding you through the line and all of that, tell them that you have a new DS160. Hey, I have a new DS160. Can you ensure that it's uploaded into my case? They'll take a look real quick and make sure that the right number is in there. And then when you get to the visa interview window, also give the visa officer your new DS160 confirmation page. They will be able to scan it. And if it isn't loading into their system, they'll be able to fix it so that it will load into the system and they can read that one first. If you have any questions about what you need to be putting in the DS-160, how you're going to answer the questions in there, or if you have errors and you really wanna figure out whether or not it's material and you need to fill out a new one, we're happy to help you here at Argo Visa and we look forward to being in touch.